Bom dia, pessoal. Hoje nós estamos em Donauwörth, na Alemanha, na fábrica do H-145, onde nós vamos conhecer hoje essa aeronave, que é o demonstrador, e a Constance, que é a chefe do programa do H-145M, vai mostrar para a gente o helicóptero, vai explicar um pouco dele, para vocês conhecerem um pouco mais dessa aeronave. Ok? okay. Constance, thank you for attention. Please show the, the machine for no, people in Brazil. With pleasure, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for giving us the opportunity to introduce our beloved H145M. The H145M is a multi-role aircraft helicopter, which is based on the civil H145. I think all of you know it for sure. And um, this is a multi-role aircraft because we can easily switch from different kinds of roads, from a uh, search and rescue road to a troop transport, and then also to a VIP transport, but also to a light attack version, as you can obviously see. But we will come to that later on. For the cockpit, maybe we should start with that. So, just to have a better look, you can see that we have a digital cockpit inside. The management system or the flying system is called Helionix. Helionix is uh, completely developed by Airbus helicopters and it also reduces um, the workload of the crew. The crew consists normally for an H145M uh, of two uh, members, so meaning the pilot is always sitting on the right-hand side, and the co-pilot, which is called Ghana, is sitting on the left-hand side. Why is he called Ghana? Because he is responsible for the complete weaponization, for the complete handling of the weapons and the communication system in the technical way. As you can see, we have also another additional mission um, display on the left hand side, which is not, uh, which can't be used by the right hand side by the pilot, but on the left hand side, the gunner, he needs this kind of mission display to focus also with the EOS system, with the camera system, which you can see here below and also to handle the weapon directly. In the middle, you can see the so-called gunner armament grip. The gunner armament grip is used for the weapons. And on the left-hand side here, we have normally the stick for using the EOS system. The uh, halionics is one part to reduce our um, workload inside the cockpit, but another part for sure is our four axis autopilot, which is really well appreciated worldwide. Uh, not just for the military community, but also for the civil community. As you can see, in the military version, the crew is completely protected by the so-called light armament protection kit, which is against uh, a protection for 7.62 millimeters. Then, additional to that, we have also the capability to use this kind of helicopter as a kind of troop or protection helicopter, which can be equipped with a uh, door gunner. The door gunner, as you can see it here, is installed on a so-called pintle mount. The pintle mount will be equipped with a weapon. The weapon, which kind of weapon will be installed, is up to the customer. It can be this one, it can also be a door gunner, a gatling gun, it can also be a sniper rifle. So it's up to the customer. Here we are really flexible. And this is also our success behind it. You can see it uh, in different ways that we are also modular, not just regarding the door gun, but also regarding the weaponization, which is installed on the outer side. This kind of weapon launcher is a rocket launcher. This rocket launcher is a 70 millimeter rocket launcher. This dedicated rocket launcher uh, can be equipped with unguided rockets here in these nine tubes and also with three laser-guided rockets in the top. So it's a mixed launch right here. So 12 in total on both sides. So meaning at the end you can shoot 24 rockets in total. If you are not interested in rocket, no problem. You can easily change it. We can also offer to you Canon 20 millimeters or also an HMP 400, 12.7 millimeter. Or, and this is our, I would say, smartest weapon on board is the Spike ER2 which is an anti-tank missile air to ground, which can uh, be handled via fiber optical or radio frequency controlled, meaning at the end you have a range, a firing range up to 16, 16 kilometers. And I think this is really impressive to, to see it. 
The installation in which we are using the helicopters is completely done with the so-called multi-purpose pylon. This kind of weapon installation can easily change. Here we are not talking about days or, or weeks. This kind of weapon change can be done within one hour. And if you're not interested in using the aircraft as a light attack version, you can also use it as a search and rescue um, version as well. You can definitely uh, deinstall this multi-purpose pilot within um, half an hour, one hour. It depends on your training, um, I would say, status at the moment. So I will close the floor. The brackets which we are seeing here can be also used for the so-called uh, fast graphene. It can also be used for the equipment, so for the Victorian hoist or the Woodbridge hoist. So this must be clear in which way you want to use the aircraft, but the entire aircraft has all the fixed provision which you need for handling the aircraft as a multi role helicopter. So, what else can I say? At the moment, you see or well, this helicopter is completely equipped with five blades. So definitely our way forward is just to have fly bay, fly, five blade rotor systems, meaning at the end we have the opportunity here that uh, we have a bearingless, a hingeless main rotor system, which is of course from the maintainability point of view much preferred by our customers and therefore this is also really appreciated. Okay, let's have a look. So, so look around. Regarding militarization, of course, the word militarization also foresees besides the weapons also an EWS system. Here we, on our prototype, we have just in quotation marks missile warners equipped and chef and declared defenders. We are also able to offer to the customer laser um, rate, a laser warner and a radar warner. So this is also not a problem for us. Unfortunately, this helicopter is not equipped with this, but this is already in our portfolio, just to let you know. Regarding the interior, one part of the multi Role mission is, of course, that we can easily change also to the search and rescue helicopter, meaning at the end we can use these rays and put inside two stretchers, a disaster um, yeah, management kit to handle um, yeah, the victims, for example, and also to use it as a troop transport. From a theoretical point of view, you can um, carry nine uh, soldiers easily on high uh, density seats. If you are um, yeah, in a mission with special forces, this will be re reduced. So normally we have to say that up to four heavy equipped uh, special forces soldiers can be, um, yeah, can be transported with this helicopter. I talked about the uh, uh, door gun. If you have a gun, uh, a Gatling installed, of course you need a little bit more bullets. Uh, so 200, 400 bullets shouldn't be enough for, for that. And therefore, we are also in the same. We are using also the same ways for put inside uh, additional ammo boxes, up to five, uh, four thousand rounds. So, meaning at the end, you have a little bit more, let's say, uh, arguments on your side <laughs> to protect the helicopter. Okay. Okay. Then another look around. What is also really important is our shrouded uh, tail rotor system. As you can imagine, we can easily reinstall and remove all the doors. And this is also appreciated by uh, Special Forces, for example, as well, because the access and the, and the entry point is uh, easy, easy to the helicopter, but also to lease the helicopter. And if everything is running, the complete rotor system is running, including the tail rotor system, you can imagine that it is much more safe uh, that you have this kind of rotor system shrouded instead of open. So I'm, I'm also a former soldier, and every time I left the helicopter in the rear part, the first uh, reaction was go, go, go to the right or left, but please do not uh, run into the um, open tail rotor system. Additional to that, that it is shrouded, it makes it also really, really quiet. 
And this is also appreciated by special forces because no one wants to hear the enemy is coming. Yeah. So at the end, this is also very helpful for the, yeah, I would say for the mission as itself. The same for the rotor blades. We talked about the five rotor blades. We also, also reduce the diameter of the rotor blades as it says as well. And this is also appreciate, appreciated if you are landing in confined areas. Because, uh, of course, the risk to get in contact with a tree or something else is reduced. Then, additional to that, um, if you are in a military environment, you need definitely also need tactical radios. And for tactical radios, we are completely open. We are always listening to the customers what kind of communication systems are needed. If it is a satellite communication, if it is a data link communication, link 16, if it is a VMF communication, an up and down link, this can all be equipped in this aircraft. And it was several uh, times done in the past as well. So this is normal that as soon as we are starting a negotiation and discussion exchange with the customer, that we are always asking in which way we have to be modular, in which way we have to adapt ourselves, our helicopter to the ground sources, for example, but so that we can guarantee all the time the interoperability with the ground forces directly. So this is important. Okay, then we have now, let's say we turn around one more time, and as you can see, uh, everything which is uh, completely presented here is already delivered, already developed, which is already available. So, <laughs> as I already mentioned, we have, we can easily change our weapon system. This is, for example, the HMP 400, 12.7 millimeters. But as I already said it up front, we can also easily change to another weapon system. Here again, it is up to the customer. Good. For the EOS system, I said at the very beginning, we have a camera system on board. Here we are also flexible. We have different kind of suppliers which we can offer. It's also up to the customer which one do they want to have with different kind of sensors for fighting at day, day and night. So we are not completely limited uh, on day missions. Um, night missions are also no problem for us. So we are, what you are seeing in total, is a 3.8 ton helicopters with two engine, powerful engines, especially for hot and high campaigns. And I think, and I hope, it is really impressive in which way we can equip the aircraft. Okay. Constance, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you very much. Pessoal, então, o que nós vimos aqui? A Constance mostrou o helicóptero todo. Ela fez um walk-around no Aguas 145M, mostrou em detalhes os armamentos, os pontos de fixação dos armamentos, a capacidade da aeronave de operar também com forças especiais, em, em ações é, de ajuda humanitária, ela pode ser utilizada também, ou seja, é um helicóptero que pode ser usado em, várias, em vários tipos de missões desde as militares até o que nós vimos há pouco tempo no Rio Grande do Sul, fazendo apoio humanitário. Então é uma, uma aeronave bastante interessante para nossas forças armadas, e aqui nós tivemos um, um geral. Você vê aqui armamento axial, lançadores de foguete, metralhadoras a bordo da, da aeronave, e o uso com o fast rope para as, para as forças especiais. Uh, uh, since the, on board the, the 8145M, uh, because it's uh, for us, uh, this uh, one character is very, very important for the capacity to this helicopter. So we are really, really proud that we have already the capabilities on board of the H145M to handle a drone. For us, we don't care which kind of drone it is. The most important thing for us is to know which kind of protocol is used, which kind of data link is used on the drone directly so that we can also adapt our helicopter. So the drone handling as itself will be done on the left hand side via the gunner. And the Ghana has the opportunity to use a dedicated software, which is coming from a partner. And this partner gives us the opportunity to have nice algorithm on board so that he can handle everything from the drone point of view. So as soon as a drone is started from the ground and in the air, the Ghana will take over the control of the drone but not just the drone, the control of the drone itself, but also the control of the sensors which are equipped on the drone.
So meaning at the end, we can easily extend our surveillance capabilities with this kind of uh, yeah, extra equipment. And we can also use it as a kind of loitering ammunition, meaning at the end, our operation area will be increased with this kind of control drone control handling. So this is our intention. In which way it is done from the operational point of view, this will be discussed directly with the customer. And also the customer can give or can stay in contact with us to discuss the different kind of drones if they have already something in place or if they want to, or if they have the intention to procure something in the future. There we are open and we already did it. It is not that we are talking about a theory. We already did it not just with one drone, but also with two drones. So we are able to handle also several kind of drones in parallel. So this must be discussed. And we are having this kind of um, capability, I would say since two, three years, we started this kind of uh, road roughly uh, six years ago, uh, ago in 2018. And then we evolved it with each and every step. But we didn't do it alone. We had really strong support also from different kinds of operators so that we know exactly in which way we can include it inside the cockpit so that there is no increase of the workload, but a decrease um, of the workload. So this is really important. And what you can see directly on the HMI, directly on the mission display. This is also really important. So it's not coming just from our side, it is done in a cooperation with customers. Again, thank you. It's the beautiful helicopter. The shoulders, the shark mouth, the, the, <laughs> the great. <laughs> it's great. Pessoal, tá aí o H145M apresentado para vocês direto de Dona Vert na Alemanha.